I I am popularly known as the international manager the largest private hospitality institute that got world class education and can fully pride itself for being one of the most foremost actions of the country that offer globally recognized degrees in hotel management the hugely popular events that the host IIHM international young for olympia as the last is plated only for the verdict to be pronounced Malaysia Ajem has fine its core objectives clearly over the years it is an institution that has always worked towards causes that deep IIH proudly calls them food soldier a dynamic working tirelessly to ensure a hunger free world and man But at HM, education is like being a BBA class hospitality. Us at IHM, we train our students to become business hospitality managers. In hand, we are fully charismatic and part of a very hard is like. finance ticketing and a whole range of the management for a great hospitality career call 9330 50000 My name is Leena Chaturvedi and I am the director here at IIT Jaipur and with me I have a very dynamic director of the marketing department. So welcome Daksha, welcome all. So in today's seminar we will be talking about careers and what it takes to be a food prep specialist last week when we met we spoke about how the culinary department and all the career options that you have in hospitality world in and out of hospitality of hotels today we will to talk about what you will learn when you are at iihm in the food and beverage department and how it is helpful in making your career and path forward So when you join the IITM, learn four core subjects that we've already spoken to you about. You learn the art of housekeeping. You learn the art of front office. You learn the culinary arts, and above all, you learn the art of food and beverage service. Food and beverage service is one of those core departments in a hotel, a restaurant, in a coffee shop, or anywhere where food is being served. It is the service part which makes or breaks the restaurant. What is your opinion on this class? I mean, uh, it's a it's a very dynamic industry which you mentioned, Amali. And you you develop a personal not as a uh, not as a uh, individual but also in uh, all sorts of life. So when I entered, uh, you know, in the hospitality when I joined college, uh, it was a uh, You know, I was not aware about uh, where I'm going to, but then as and when I, you know, went on year by year, I realized that you know I am in the right place because I was learning. I was, you know, uh, listening to the uh, mentors of mine and the faculties of mine, and I really, you know, uh, evolved uh, with a period of time in hospitality. That's true. You know, if you show that interest, there's so much, so much, so much that you can learn. There is a misdemeanor in the world that. When you join the food and beverage service, all you do is serve food. So let me just break this little mold that people put the food and beverage service into, and we'll talk about what are the things we break up the entire curriculum. We'll talk to you about what are the things you'll learn, and in the end, we're going to talk about how it's going to help you in whatever you plan to do in that. 
So when you join the industry, it's not just about plates, it's not just about forks and knives. You must have seen so many movies which talk about the whole array of forks, knives, spoons, and you really don't know what to do. Okay? That culture is still there in all the fine dining restaurants that you go and eat. You know, even the simplest of simple restaurants will give you a spoon, they'll give you a fork, they'll give you a knife, there's another knife, and you really don't know what to do. That's an art and a craft to this. Okay? When we talk about cutlery, when we talk about different plates, when we talk about different glassware, for a layman, it's just simple plate glass of knife. Okay? But there's so much to learn. This. When you join, the first thing you learn is the different styles, different types of cutlery, different types of crockery that is used in fine dining. We don't just talk about eating small, small restaurants. We talk big. We teach you the best. We teach you what actually goes into laying out an eight course menu, a seven course menu, and a lot of times, 17 courses menu. Okay? Nowadays, people don't have the capacity to eat that much, nor do they have the time to be there for about four hours in that 17 course menu. So it's been cut short. But that does not mean the cutlery and the property and the glass that has changed. So we have an array of glasses here. Okay, for a layman, I might just serve my water in this glass because it looks pretty. But uh, the actual glass is this one. What is it called? A water goblet. That's right. And then we also teach you about different styles of wine glasses. Okay, so you right now you see two different wine glasses on my table and two of his. Okay, and I must know what wine goes to what. Okay, so will you tell me as a student? Which one would be what I'll serve my white wine in, and which one would I serve my red wine in? If you would have asked me when I would join your when of course, I have not touched the wine glass. But uh, this is the wine glass, white wine glass. This is the white wine. And there's a reason behind this. So we'll come to the reason later on. You know, let's not get too technical for it. But let's just tell them, you know, there's so much to learn. So, and then they're placed in a triangle. Why are they placed in a triangle? So when a guest comes in, you must start with water, the water goblet. Then with the first few courses of the meal, you have the white wine, which is lighter, and then the darker meats, the heavier food that you eat, you wash it down with the red wine. So you have placements on the table of your wines and your wine glasses in the way that it's going to be served, as is done for the problem with the cutlery that is placed there. So you have a soup spoon for the soup, which is the first course to serve with guests who start. Right now, we have a main uh, uh, cutlery for the main course. So we just going to be having two, uh, two courses of meat. So we have something for the soup and we have something for the main course. But when you're going to be going for a sit down, you have an array of plates. A uh, butter plate, uh, you know, BME plate, like it's called, bread and butter plate, butter knife, okay, is used to cut your bread and butter, your bread and meat. This is not everything onto your main dishes. So, so much to learn. Why are things put an inch away, a half an inch away from the edge of the table? Why does the table not drop? Why does the table not make sounds? There's so much to learn. So this is what you'll do in your first few days at IIH. And as you move forward, you'll be learning all the styles of service. When you're in the first year, you do everything basic. And there's so much to learn. And your eyes really open. And it's one of the most interesting uh, part of food of uh, the hospitality management course that you get into. There's so much to learn. You know, apart from the glasses, the forks, and the knives, you have so many other sets of cutlery and crockery. You also have, to, when you're there, you learn about mocktails, which are non alcoholic beverages that are served with juices. You also learn a lot about teas. Okay? For us, when we, before we come into college, before we come into a culinary program, chai is what is made at home. In an Indian house, it's usually boiled with the TV, the milk, ginger, gloves, and all the things that you think of to give it a nice flavor. Winters, you use some herbs. Summers, you use something light. Less milk, more milk. But when you come into learning, you learn so much about the different styles of tea. I was shocked when I was asked to make my first cup of tea and I put it to boil for hours. Okay, it was there on the thing and until the color didn't come. I didn't know the difference of tea leaves. Okay, so I was waiting for a nice tea 
to groom and here are the colors, not realizing that I'm producing one of the finest quality of tea, which doesn't color so much, it doesn't mix the water. Okay, so there's so much uh, different styles of coffees, different types of service of coffees, different things that you would be having with the coffee, cocoa, how it's made. There's so much, so much, so much to learn. When you're there, the first year in Food and Service is one of the finest and the most exciting part of Food and Service, right? Along with this, you have to do a lot of practicals, okay? What, what, what can I do practical? Just laying a table? Of course not. When you're here, you have fine dining yangas, the breakfast yangas, okay? Breakfast service is one of the most special services. One that they do at Hilton is considered to be the world's best, where they serve freshly squeezed orange juice. Okay. What are the other things that you put on the table with the uh, breakfast service? There's a couple of things, you know, on the breakfast. We put some jars around us, put some butter, sugar, because uh, when we are uh, on breakfast, you know, when guests come for breakfast, they ask me sugar is important in the breakfast. We ask for the butter. So we uh, put some uh, salt, pepper, butter, uh, freshly, you uh, know, fresh peppers. So that's how it, it will, they don't need to go uh, and ask uh, to the server, you know, how to do that. So just to, uh, as they are coming into hotels, we are providing them the luxury. Now, why not we provide everything to them, whatever they're looking for? So these are some accompaniments uh, and, uh, you know, condiments which we provide in the menu. So first year, very, very exciting, a lot of learning, lots of good experiences. You learn to do so much in the first year. I see you have three lovely pins on your jacket, Lakshmi. Okay, so you have one of my CEO, you have one of the portraits that you're part of the IHM as I am, but you have a pin that I'm very, very envious of. You know, the one that is there. What does that pin stand for? So, um, you know, I was not knowing about the career in beverages and wines also. As I said, when I joined IH, I got an opportunity to learn about wines and beverages. And in a way, I got a chance to, you know, uh, to know about wine courses that we have. So, the level thing which suggests that it's a, you know, WSET level 3. WSET is an organization which is my expectation, which is very subject. It provides uh, certification according to the level. So this is a level two uh, certification which I received. And this is a level three which suggests that this person has cleared as a certificate level. Wow, that's really really wonderful. So you know uh, when you come into your second year, in your semester three, that's when you are of the age when you are taught, when you can be legally taught about beverages. Second year is all about beverages. You know, for you, for a layman, beverages can be anything which has alcohol. But you'll be shocked and you'll be surprised at the variety of beverages that are available worldwide. And every country, every state, every little region around the world have their own special beverage. Everyone, you know, in the royal families of Pakistan, they make their own. Hadi Dati has the best uh, roses that grow out of it. And the kingdoms around that in the earlier times used to make something called gulab. Okay, they should distill the flavors of gulab and make a beverage out of it, which was come after a dinner. They have Kesar Kasturi, they have so many beverages to grow. You know, so you must look up, you know, look up where you stay and look up at what is made around that area. Every part of India, every part, every country in India. Every, every country around India has its own beverages. There is so much to learn. So while you're here at IIHM, you will learn a lot about these beverages. You can specialize in being a sommelier. Sommelier may sound like a big word to you right now, but sommelier is one of the most, being a sommelier is one of the most exciting career options that you have. But you really have to know a lot. You have to, uh, don't take a lot of interest. So we're going to see a small video about how we inculcate wine into your education. You know, nowhere else in the world we have a culinary program or a food and beverage program. If we'll teach you 
so much and such hands-on learning about beverages, okay, and beverages like wines, which was amongst one of the first beverages to have been recorded across the world, especially in Europe, and which is to be traded across the world, traveled all across. There are tons and tons of uh, bottles and uh, forests in the deep seas and oceans where the, the ships used to sink. Everyone used to carry a lot of wines with them. Laksha, you were very lucky to have gone on one of those tours, right? You qualified. So tell us about how you managed to qualify and go for this tour. So, first of all, it's been a lifetime opportunity, I would rather say, uh, for me. And uh, it was tough, yes. Uh, it was the first match of ours. So, you know, we were not quite knowing uh, what it's going to be and how we, we uh, you know, getting qualified for, for the for the wine tour. But then uh, I got support from my faculty teachers that taught me about uh, the wines. Uh, I started learning about wines and only because uh, we, I was just, I, you know, they just wanted me to know about basics of wines. Uh, so there was uh, criteria which uh, takes into account that uh, your academics, uh, your uh, curriculum activities, the communications, and then later stage, which we had to use the very long wines over here. And, uh, uh, to so that is how you know I just hear all the lounge and I got selected. So where else did you get to travel? So um, we started. Uh, we visited mainly in France and Italy. So we started with uh, Italy, Florence, and then. Um, mm -hmm. This was an Italy. So we went to Bern and in Bern, which was similar to that in So we learned a lot over there. We uh, saw many as uh, what uh, what soil they are using, what uh, you know, uh, manure they are using you know, to get the soil uh, you know, particular get the right. Then uh, we moved to Lecon, Lecon de Luni to the France, and we learned about uh, lots of different types of grapes, uh, white grapes, you know, uh, uh, red grapes. Right? And we went to the Chablis, Chablis, uh, so, um, the history of uh, wine, you can say it's in France. So uh, we went to Grand Du, Vignettes of Chablis. Uh, we went to Chardonnay, it's a historical village uh, in uh, France. And then uh, we later moved to uh, the Leaves, which is a champagne reason. So, you know, many of you know that uh, champagne can be uh, produced anywhere. And that's how I got to know that uh, I know from the champagne reason, many things other is part of the part. So we went to these uh, GH Moons. Uh, we saw that uh, 20 acres of the underground museum, and then we went to Paris, they enjoyed that. So, you know, uh, when, you call, when you join IHM, you get the opportunity, like he said, you get an opportunity to go to places which a lot of us just dream of. Okay? And this is if you qualify, if you really work hard. It's not just, you know, I'm going to do hotel management and that's going to be my life. It's the hard work, it's the hard dedication, which pays off in so many opportunities. This is one such opportunity that I actually get to. So this is one short little video on what it is like to be traveling across our vineyard, going into the vineyards and seeing how the bottles of wines that are there all across the five-star hotels in homes and in Shops. So uh, let's just watch the video now and then come back and talk a little bit more. Welcome everyone to Marseille. We have our, our, our wonderful, uh, deserving IHM uh, Euro Wine Tour experience uh, about to arrive. The last year, great experience in the Valley.
Focus on try to get the diversity in the different regions, they can different wine and weather. particular winery. So there's really a, uh, why did you be able to experience that? We also had some experience with biodynamic Um, Benito, which is a famous wine region around the Verona, and we're going to visit uh, Suave, which is a famous white wine region. We're going to go to the Seco area and see how Italy's most famous wine produced. But on the way, we're we're going to stop in the very famous city of Prana. And if you've heard Prana, you may have been associated with Parmas and Our food. Into the super stand. Not only the wine, but the Great, 100% Sangiovese, and we're going to go visit Italy's most famous winery. We're going to visit Sasakaya, and Sasakaya, without it, is the most famous winery in all of this system. And Sicily has a great uh, wine growing culture there as well, and they are most famed for their fortified wine, uh, Marsala. So we're going to Di Bortoli, a quality producer of Marsala, visit them, see how that particular wine is made and um, enjoy the, the food of Sicily. So we're very excited to be Wow. Truly, truly wow. I'm so envious of you. But seriously, when we talk about education, as an educator, which I've been for the last 11 years, it is really, really a wonderful way to expose the students to big bad world of wines, okay? There's so much to learn, there's so much that you can do. There is a history, there's a geography, there is a story in every bottle that you see. It's just not a bottle of wine. Okay, we talk about this at another time. Keep logging in regularly when we talk about it, because our next episode is going to be 
uh, talk about uh, what are popular tales, the stories that are popular tales. But over and above that, you know, once you're there, once you learn so much, there's so much that you are exposed to. And the biggest storyteller that we have amongst us is Keith Edgar. Keith Edgar is a world renowned scenario. It's one of the best taken in the United States of America. He travels across the world teaching, and we are so lucky to have him as one of our teachers. Almost all of our food practice teachers have to have this pin, okay, the pin that you see on Lakshas uh, jacket. Once you finish with the first level, then you're certified as a W set level one, the minor school to trust uh, the pin given by them for level one training. They tell people that we are CEOs and basics of life, and you can be selected as a white person. You can be selected the best of hotels to serve the whites. A level two pin, which is a blue pin, so the first level is an orange, beautiful, bright orange pin. The second one is a nice dark blue pin. Once you get that, work, job, some every day. You be a semester, a junior semester, that people will reach out to you. Because not only do you know about the waters, or what to serve a guest, but you also know how to pair the wines, okay? Did you even know that wines, um, that you, why don't you talk about that? Well, let's hear about pairing, what, what pairing means, and how having this double set level two pin has helped you in being a better food beverage person. I think as the, you know, earlier there was no message wine, that's it. And as and when you know more the travelers are coming, the uh, foreign nationalities are coming, they probably enjoy wine, right? So when we go there, we enjoy French wine and my children now. But then as India is uh, you know a developing different nation of you know, wine nation, we are uh, in India, we are getting uh, beautiful wines uh, from Sulawesi and you know, So you know uh, it is an interesting phenomenon of uh, uh, you know pairing. Of food with a wine. It enhances the flavor, it enhances the taste. We enjoy uh, our meat better uh, when, we, when we do it with uh, red wine and white wine. So, for most of the Indian uh, Indian food, uh, for say if you are having uh, butter chicken or butter paneer, you should uh, always do it with uh, either the da or these Because we have a lot of spices in Indian food. And, uh, you know, the white wine and these grapes have this uh, characteristics of. Uh, uh, opening up the flavors of uh, the, uh, the food that we have That's so true. It's so important. Remember when we go out to eat the Indian Chinese, you know, the spicy Indian Chinese, we need something to wash it down. Water doesn't help. So we ask for a Sprite, or we ask for a Coca Cola. Most of the time, I would love to have a thumbs up with it. Right? So, similarly, people, uh, you know, when you are in the town, when you are in the learn a lot more about tasting and pairing your minds and having this double set level two will teach you more about it. but does not mean that you have to have a double set to go ahead in life if you know your minds you know yourself which you learn beautifully in the second year uh in the in the fourth third semester and then you get into the hotels as a, as a trainee that's when you can put into practice all that you've learned and it's really appreciated by all Tellers across the world, wherever our students go to train. Along with this, distilleries are also a very, very good business. Okay? So, distilleries are also hiring a lot of students, a lot of people who pass out and graduate to help in uh, promoting their beverages. Okay? Um, you can you learn all about distilled beverages, different types of gins, different types of whiskeys, you learn a lot about different types of vodkas that are produced. India is now one last producers and has the best you know, uh, on the top 100 uh, whiskies India stands in the top 10 in the top 100 gins India stands in the top 8 so we are really evolving okay? there are a lot of whiskies that are made which are for out of uh, uh, only for export purposes like not food so you learn so much okay it does not mean that you have to taste it you learn learn so much. The taster does not have to taste so much as you. It's only done very, very quickly. These are the things that you learn that get you ahead in life. The best uh, 
Now, I'm very, very proud to say that one of our alumni is a young blockhouse. It runs the disciple uh, bar. It's one of the best. He features the top 100 uh, bartenders across the world. He's a female alumni. There's so many of our students who are working in the best of bars and uh, you know, are declaring, they run their own businesses, and they do so well after they get in such a we also have something called a distillery tool that our students go to. So when some go to France and Italy to learn about wines, which is a huge, huge business, huge, huge uh, learning curve that you have, we also send our students to Scotland, okay, to a place where they learn all about Scotch whiskey and they learn about single malts, they learn about so much more. So uh, this not only helps you in when you don't have to just become a uh, person who knows how to service of different languages, but you can work with these companies all across the world and you can become brand ambassadors of these companies and they're the ones who you know, send you out for promotional activities and so when you become a trainer around the bench, if you know how it's still how it pairs, how it matches, how it can be used in different types of cocktails. You can use this knowledge that you gain in the two years IHM, second year IHM, and you can start to work with these students once you graduate. You are wrapped up openly by most of these companies and you can be wonderful. So it's not only that you become a restaurant assistant, you can join the hotels, it's so much more that you can. Let's just see a small video about how our students went to do this uh, Scotch tour in Scotland. Okay. Once we do that, we'll show you something very, very exciting. And this is part of the program. So let's just see the video on Scotland. Our uh, trip to Scotland with Mr. Ron Scott, who is a professor in Scotch whiskey, who lives in Scotland, who's our teacher, who's our promoter, who's our Mentor when it comes to teaching distilled beverages um, across, across all our practices. Day 1, 30th October, the IIHM Scott Malt Tour touches down at Glasgow Airport in Scotland. From there, we have a three hour drive from Paisley to the Aberlour Youth Hostel. Day 2, 31st October, the IIHM Scott Malt Tour visits Aberlour Distillery. Speyside, Cooper Hinch, Balveni Distillery and Strathyla Distillery. As the number of visitors for tours at the Balveni Distillery is limited to a maximum of eight, some of the tour party visits there while the others visit Strathyla Distillery. Day 3, 1st November, IIHM's first visit of the day is the Cardew Distillery followed by a tour of the area with short stops at other distilleries of the area. In the afternoon the Scott Malt visits the Balveni Distillery and Strathyla Distillery again. Day 4, 2nd November, the IIHM Scott Malt Tour leaves Aberlour and heads south. The first stop is of the Dalwini Distillery for touring the unique tasting of malt whiskey with chocolate. Then they headed south to St Andrews, the home of gold but also home to the oldest university in Scotland, founded in 1413. After a short tour of the town, the next visit is the Eden Mills Distillery. Although lowland malt whiskey is produced here, their distillery also produces craft gins and this is what our tour focuses on. After the tour and tasting, we take a short trip to our hotel for an overnight stay, the Drumoig Golf Hotel. Day 5, 3rd November, Today the IIHM Scott Malt Tour visits the Craig Lockhart campus of Edinburgh and Napier University. Here IIHM meets the NU staff and has a short tour of the campus, followed by light refreshments. 
the university has been a long-standing academic partner with IIHM. We then travel a short distance to the IBIS, Edinburgh Park Hotel, and our base for two days. Traveling by the city's new tram system, we headed to the city center in the Queen Street, home of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, for a very special tasting and tuition session. Afterward, we enjoy a meal and spend some time in the city center before returning by tram to the hotel. Day 6, 4th November, after nearly 600 miles, the IIHM Scott Mall tour reaches the final day. No planned visits for the day but a free day for sightseeing in Edinburgh's old town and last minute shopping before the flight home, the next day. With the early rise, the next day we leave the hotel by 5 a.m. and travel to the airport, 10 minutes away by road. There's so much you have uh, upstate yourselves in the way. There's so many things that you have learned so many new things. You must be wondering why is it just one person from every campus that goes? Well, it's not that you won't be learning this. The thanks of technology, we are connected to all across the entire trip. So we wake up as early as uh, four o'clock in the morning, and we wake up as we are awake as late as five o'clock. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the night when our counterparts are there in France and Italy and Scotland, and you see the live streaming of what they're done with a direct uh, you know, commentary, which is on by either Edgar or Ron Scott, who will be teaching you while you are. So your studies go on through the day, and you are there as if you are you know, uh, experiencing the whole thing. When they go into restaurants, when they see something nice, when they see something different, which has not been taught to you otherwise, or you have not been exposed to, you get to see this. France is known as the mother of uh, food and culinary. Okay, that's where the menu work menu came from. That's where the 17 course French classical menu came from, which is the basis of all the menus that we talk about now. Okay, it has the world's best restaurants, it has the world's best train, which is an epitome of luxury. We have the Orient Express, okay, which talks about the best food in the world, it talks about the best service in the world, which is, of course, one of the most expensive uh, train journeys that you will uh, experience in the world. Okay, there is something called the Garage of Charlotte Service, which is very, very popular in the very fine dining restaurants where the meals go up to hundreds of pounds or euros uh, for a meal for one, for two, it goes into thousands. Okay? The Gallo service is a personalized service where uh, it's really very, very exciting to see uh, the food being prepared. In front of you. A lot of salads are made, a lot of uh, beverages are made. So today we have with us uh, Ajit Sir, Hi, who is our head of department for uh, food and beverage service. He himself is at upset level two and he promotes wines and uh, education in IIT Jaipur, both are the second and third years. So he's showing you something which you could have heard of, you know, if you've been reading a lot of books which are from Europe, you must have heard of this dish called the Preps Set. Okay, it is a beautiful dish. It's one of the most unique dishes, and he's going to prepare something for you for the press to set. Because we are so short of time, we have to prepare a lot of things. It's a great, which is served in a very, very classic way. Okay, so enjoy this little uh, demonstration by Ajit sir. Okay, he's making a crepe Suzanne. So tell me exactly what has gone into what you're making. Uh, right now, I'm making an orange sauce that is uh, made by like little caramelized of sugar, and we are adding the fresh uh, orange juice with a uh, little bit of orange zest. So it will give you very good the uh, orange tangy uh, taste. And I have crepes uh, ready with me. These are pans uh, which are made by uh, refined flour and uh, butter, uh, milk with the uh, egg one egg, and I have add some orange zest in it. And little bit vanilla, so it will be very good flavor. This, yes, please. Can I help you with this? Yes, 
And uh, the amazing thing about this piece is it is served uh, in a uh, flammy way. It is called uh, like we will cook uh, with the help of alcohol. So when uh, this dish is ready, we are giving final touch with help. And I have uh, brand mania with me. So it is orange liquor. So my sauce is moreover ready. This is a very, very classic French dessert that you get to eat. And it is served in a restaurant in a very classic way. This is a trolley which actually comes in. Uh, visual display to space and dining. We uh, are doing it on a tabletop right now. But uh, so tell me, do I need to add the alcohol yes, now? Yes, so you can heat it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to add a little bit of Romania, like you said, which is a liqueur from France, which has got an orange flavor. And is that right? Yes. Yes, you are very nice. So I'm going to heat this up and it's going to give you a lot of, you know what we're going to do after some time, we're also going to switch off the lights. And it's going to be a delight to watch. I think that lunch is this. So I am extremely clumsy. When so it comes to I have made my pancake in the shape and I'm putting it in salt. I have to put in the sauce, so you can get taste of orange sauce everywhere. Okay, so it's a pancake, which is uh... Can I with this action? Our dish is ready. So I'm taking the orange slice to present my dish. So this is alcohol, I'm putting it uh, on top of my dish. So you can see. And now final touch is given with ice cream, scoop of ice cream. And on top, we can put a maraschino cherry. And you have to consume it ASAP as soon as possible because uh, it is very hot and ice cream is uh, cold. It will get uh, many.
IIHM, popularly known as the International So like I was saying, you know, uh, food and beverage service, there's so many aspects that you can uh, decide to get into. Uh, in a hotel, you can be a restaurant manager, you can be a bartender, you can be a room service uh, order taker, you can be a food and beverage controller, you can be the sommelier, you can be a person who handles uh, the alcohol stores, there's so much there in a hotel. Apart from this, you can work in uh, as a, what else can you do? You can work in cruise liners, you can work in uh, uh, airlines, yes? You can uh, become an entrepreneur, start something of your own. If you want to be a chef, learning food and beverage service is one of the most important things. Being multitasked, multifaceted, you can create your best restaurants, okay? Uh, you can also uh, become a consultant, you know, because so many people want to open things. A lot of chefs who have, who want to cook, but they don't know how to do the service. You can come up with unique ideas. You can plan out their plates, you can plan out their cutleries. You can just train people in doing service. There's so much there. Uh, entrepreneurship is one of the most, the latest things after the lockdown that people are going into. There is so much that you can do. I hope you enjoyed today as much as I have sort of bringing it to you all and talking about my most passionate department that I think uh, is one of uh, something that there's so much learning for. So tell me about uh, how you feel about the department. Uh, are you feeling as excited about people joining this department and loving it as much as we do? I mean, it is a most um, interesting department because every day you are learning something. It is not just related to the beverages and services which are providing, but also with the food. Because at the end, we are serving it and we should know what, uh, how we have cooked it and uh, uh, what, what are the accompaniments with this. So it's a dynamic thing again. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a complex department. Yes, it is. It's very dynamic. It's very complex and a lot of fun. There's so much to learn. And if you are there, you know, if you want to become somebody, if you want to really make a career in hospitality, you know now what all you can study and how important food and beverage is. One of the reasons to be at IIHN is because all the experiences that we give you, all the teaching that we give you at IIHN, which you get nowhere else. So uh, have a great day, people, and choose wisely, choose smartly. I look forward to welcoming a lot of you at IIHM all across our campuses. We are there in Kolkata, in Delhi, Jaipur, Ahmedabad, Goa, Pune, Bangalore. Uh, we are in Hyderabad, we are in Bangkok, and in Samarkand. So you know, choose wisely, look out for our, uh, or contact us. All our details are given on your screen and in the video that is going to follow. Thank you for being here with us. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. IIHM, popularly known as the International Institute of Hotel Management, is one of the largest private hospitality institutes that imparts world-class education and can firmly pride itself for being one of the most foremost academic institutions of the country that offer globally recognized international degrees in hotel management. The hugely popular events that they host, IIHM International Young Chef Olympiad. As the last dish is plated, they can only wait till the evening for the verdict to be pronounced. Malaysia! Woo! 
IIHM as an institute has always been able to define its core objectives clearly over the years. It is an institution that has always worked towards causes that give back to the society. IIHM proudly and aptly calls them food soldiers, a dynamic group of students working tirelessly to ensure a hunger-free world. Hotel management, hotel plus management. At IHM, education is like doing a BBA plus hospitality. Because at IHM, we train our students to become global business hospitality managers. In one hand, they are full of knowledge in hospitality, charismatic, and they have got the study skills of a very hardcore management subjects like finance, strategic HR, global marketing, and a whole range of the management inputs. For a great hospitality career,